Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastychutes.com. In this video I'm going to show you how to create the back of our badge. In the previous video I showed you how to create the front of the badge. If you have not seen this tutorial then click the link here or click the link in the description. If you're joining me from the first part then welcome back. So let's get started and I'll show you how to create the back of this badge. And we're going to start like we did in the previous video. We're going to create a new canvas, Command N, to bring up our new document. And we're going to call this Badge Back. And what we're going to do, we're going to change the, the size to 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters and go with 150 dots per inch. And there we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a new layer, Command Shift N. And we're going to call this background. Okay. And I'm going to hit this with the fill this with the paint paint can and change it to 5% so I can see what I'm going to be doing with the white. And command shift N for a new layer. I'm going to call this, we're actually going to call this one color. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my menu, my tools, grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw a circle by pressing shift I can get a nice clean uh, scaled circle there excellent and I'm going to fill this with a purple the same purple as the uh, front of the badge okay hit that deselect command D and press V to grab the selection tool so I can move that one around and then I'm going to create another layer command shift N, and I'm going to call this base. Okay, and I'm going to quickly come over to my layers panel, click on that color, and I'm going to grab the magic wand tool and just select the color area. So I've got that area selected. Come into my base, and I'm going to come down to my colors and just toggle the colors there so I can pull up my white, and I'm going to fill that with the white. Command D to deselect and Press, just press V to pull up our selection tool and I'm going to press command T and this is going to enable me to toggle the free transform now I'm going to press shift and alt and hold them down and I'm going to scale this just ever so slightly down so I'm exposing a small stroke what appears to be a stroke of purple and that's going to be our color rim because of course we are looking at the back of the badge and let's go with that and this time I'm going to come over to my layers panel and on my base I'm going to right click and click duplicate layer now this one's going to be called inner shadow okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this inner, inner shadow layer double click and I'm going to enable inner shadow I'm just going to quickly toggle some of the properties here so I'm going to toggle the distance and push the size up a little bit. It's a bit big. And toggle the opacity. And we leave this, we leave it at that for now. We'll we'll tweak it later. But I'm going to press Command T to toggle the freeze transform. And I'm going to press Shift and Alt, hold them down, and I'm going to scale this down ever so slightly. Again, so we appear to have that rim there so we've we've got ourselves like a white rim there and we can see that by the inner shadow and the next thing I'm going to do is create a metal shine and um, this is going to be a little bit tricky but I'm sure you'll be able to follow along now the first thing I'm going to do to help me and to make this easier is I'm going to bring up my rulers by pressing command R I'm going to bring up my rulers on the side here I'm going to just quickly grab one from the from the vertical and place that roughly in the center and one from the horizontal and so I've roughly got my guides through there and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this metal um, metal effect let's just call it metal effect and I'm going to come over to my um, lasso tool here and I'm going to click and hold and what I want is I want the one in the middle because that's going to be nice and easy for us and I'm going to start in the middle I'm just going to click once and move my mouse over here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
create like a like a triangle like that and I'm going to come over into my colors and I'm going to select a black and I'm going to fill that in there. Press D to deselect and V to grab my selection tool so I can move that around. So I've got what looks like a black triangle. Now I'm going to want to copy that layer because I'm going to need to get another one for below. So if I press and hold Alt and just click on my left mouse and drag it down, you can see I've duplicated that triangle very quickly. I'm going to press Command T to toggle my free transform. I'm just going to rotate it around and I'm going to go for something a little bit like that so the metal shine will come off at a different angle. Press enter and there we have our two black triangles. I'm going to quickly come into my layers panel and where you can see we've got two layers here. I don't want two layers, I just want one single layer. So I'm going to press on the one above and by pressing command E, I'm just going to merge that layer down so we've got that that is nicely merged. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a radial, a radial blur. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, and I'm going to come down to radial blur. And we want something around 40 to 45, so I'm going to go with 43. And when I click OK, and as you can see it's created that radial blur, but that's a little bit grainy and a bit harsh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Filter. And I'm going to come down to Blur and hit Gaussian Blur. I'm going to look for something around 50. And as you can see, it's just softening up, softening up that blur effect there. OK. And I'm going to hit Radial Blur again. Same value. And there you go, so it's, it's softened it up even more. So we hit it with a radial blur, Gaussian blur, and another radial blur. So the next thing I want to do is get rid of these guides. I can toggle these guys, guides by pressing on the keyboard and get rid of them that way. And once they are gone, I can also get rid of my rulers, don't want them anymore, by pressing Command R. And I'm going to come to my inner shadow and I'm going to grab my magic wand and I'm going to select the area outside and I'm going to come to my metal effect and press delete and I'm going to deselect that by pressing command D and a V to grab the selection tool and as you can see there is our metal shine effect now on to the next step we're going to come back to our layers panel and grab the inner shadow and we're going to right click and duplicate the layer and what we're going to do is we're going to name this um, base hyphen bevel. Okay. And we're going to move it above the metal effect. There you go. And I'm going to press Command T because we're going to toggle the scale of this. Press Shift Alt and we're going to move it down. I'm going to move it to around about, let's say, about this size. Okay. I'm going to double click on that layer, double click, and I'm going to deselect uh, inner shadow. We don't want that anymore. But what we want is the bevel and emboss. So I'm going to click on the bevel and emboss. And we're going to go for uh, outer bevel. And let's push the depth up to about, about 100. Let's go for about 100. And the size, uh, we're going to go for, let's push the size up. And we're going to change the technique to chisel hard so we get a nice look there. So it looks like the metal instead of a soft one. There you go. Let's go for about size 9. OK. And next we're going to create that metal pin of the back of our badge. So I'm going to press Command Shift N to create a new layer and I'm going to call this pin hole 1. Okay, so let's zoom in just a little bit here. Zoom in and I'm going to come over to my uh, tools and create the ellipse selection and I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to fill this with a, a sort of dark grey, like let's go for a, uh, quite a dark grey. There you go. Hit that. Uh, Command D, deselect, uh, press V to grab the selection tool. I'm just going to move this into place. And I'm going to come over to my layers panel, and on that 
pinhole one. I'm going to double click to pull up our layer styles and I'm going to select that inner shadow and I'm going to push the distance up because after all this is revealing the sort of under the underside, the sort of in between of the badge where the pin comes out of and we're going to duplicate this layer and we're going to name it pinhole 2. Okay, I'm going to move it just slightly down. I can zoom out a little bit now. And there it is. And the next thing, I'm going to create the, the actual pin. So to do that, I'm going to come over to the menu and down towards the bottom, you've got, you can use your shape tools. You can, you've got a shape menu here. And I'm going to select the rounded rectangular tool. And when I come over, I'm going to start from here, click and drag, and you can see that you can create a long rectangle, but it's got the it's got curves on the end, so it looks quite like a pin. I'm going to let that go. And by default, it's put it as a as a, a dark gray, the same dark gray we used for our um our pin holes there. So pressing B, I can grab the selection tool, I can move this around and put that in place which I'm happy with. And I'm going to come over to our shape one. I'm going to double click on the on the text. I'm going to call this pin. And I'm going to double select on the layer. And I'm going to come over to gradient overlay. Click on that. And by default, it has uh, given us a black to white gradient. Now that's that's fine. I'm happy with that. And on the angle, it's currently set to 90. But I'm just going to select zero. It's going to hit zero. So it's uh, black from left to right. But I'm going to change the opacity to about 50%. And I'm going to click OK. Because what I want is I want the grey pin, but I don't want it to be black to white. I want it to be black to grey. So using the opacity, we've managed to achieve that. And I'm going to come to my pin in my Layers panel, right click and duplicate layer. And I'm going to call this pin 2. OK, and I'm going to move this pin to just slightly to the left there. And by pressing Command T, I'm going to toggle the size and just push it down a little bit. OK, and I'm going to select two these two layers, pin one and two. There you go. And I'm going to move them around because normally um, when on the back of a badge, you notice that there's a bit of a spring coil down there. So I've just used pin 2 to do that and this pin is looking a bit short so I'm going to press command T and just scale that up a little bit so it's sort of going up there just nice and I'm going to duplicate pin 2 duplicate that call it pin 3 okay I'm going to move it up press command T and just rotate that a little bit and put it on top so it looks like that little bit of metal is coming out and just change the scale of our original pin. There you go. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And that is our pin. And finally, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create the pin shadow. So I'm going to come on top of pin 3 and I'm going to click or press Command Shift N to create a new layer. I'm going to call this pin shadow. And I'm going to use my uh, lasso tool here, the one in the middle. And I'm just going to draw a shape around the pin there and with that selected I'm going to grab the black and fill it in with the black and if I go to filter blur Gaussian blur I have a simple case of tweaking the blur there okay and if we come down to our base bevel we can select the area on the outside come back to our pen shadow and press delete we can just get rid of everything on the outside if I come to opacity on the pen shadow and just change it to around 27% or around 20% what we've got there is a discrete pin shadow and there is our finished badge well I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial if you did go ahead and subscribe to the channel as there will be lots more vids like this coming soon and if you're interested, hop over to my website at tastycheats.com. You can see a whole bunch of other videos just like this. So have fun, guys, and I'll see you.